Hello and welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Conishiro. From classrooms across the district, the Fremont Teachers Guild is utilizing teachers' creative leadership to prepare students for the to be the problem solvers of tomorrow. In a time of great innovation, Fremont teachers are working together to design better ways to keep pace with the unique needs of students. With us today to discuss the Fremont Teachers Guild and the national attention it's receiving are Hada Mangas from the Teachers Guild, Fremont Guild Chapter Lead and FUSC Instructor Coat Nate Ivey, Guild Design Lead and Kennedy High School S Science Teacher Michelle Kerr, Kerr and Design Lead for, and Horner Junior High School Science Teacher Juana Saramana, right? Okay, mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. One correction, minor. I teach everything but science. I literally oh. have credentials. <laughs> Everything except science. Well, we're still so. glad to have you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, for anybody who has never heard of this Teachers Guild, what is it, first of all? Yeah, I can answer that. So, the Teachers Guild, we are an organization that believes that educators are the innovators that our communities have been waiting for. Okay. Um, and we train teachers uh, in their belief of their ability to create change uh, and really that starts at the cross-section of design and education um, we're a not-for-profit initiative actually born out of Riverdale Country School which is this uh, education institution on the East Coast and IDEO which is a global design and innovation firm that sits in San Francisco so you are a nonprofit separate from the school district that's correct okay good so how did this partnership come together with the district yeah so I can speak on that and Nate can probably touch on touch on it a little bit but uh, we, frankly, Fremont Unified applied. It's an application program to be a district partner, and um, one of seven district partners right now is Fremont, and we have district partners that are actually all over the country, and two are local, and Fremont is one of them. Um, yes. And yeah, mm -hmm. and the, the, the partnership kind of came about organically, um, but I'll let Nate, Nate talk on it a little bit. Uh, so yeah, this work builds on the partnership between the district, the library, and the city. Uh, thinking about how Fremont is located right here in Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. a center of innovation, and how could we bring some of this innovative spirit to um, our community, our schools, our teachers, our students, uh, to kind of prepare students for solving the challenges. Uh, so were you at school one day and you were just thinking, <laughs> you know, we need more help with this, and then you searched the internet and found this Actually, it came from a partnership. So the city had been working with the district. Okay. Um, through a FUSE fellowship with Parker Thomas, who had some relationships and was yeah. looking for ways to kind of um, distribute leadership and yeah. help more people um, yeah. take responsibility and uh, have the skills for addressing challenges and making solutions. Yeah. Okay. And we have a f uh, actually a f some friends over at Genentech, the mm -hmm. biotech company, who are really interested. Actually, when this is first thought of. Uh, how student the Fremont would be about how students uh, and representative students would access STEM classrooms. Nice. Um, and obviously, Genentech had some really like in interest there, and so it just seemed organic and like there was some overlap. But what we found in the process is that there's a lot of interest for distributed leadership across a lot of fields, okay. and not just STEM classrooms. So your organization is really to support the teachers in being innovative mm -hmm. with their ideas and free flowing their creativeness throughout how they teach. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. correct. I mean, I okay. think uh, a lot of problem solving uh, okay. comes from teachers themselves, and they s are the first uh, line of interacting with students, so who better to understand what students' needs are. Okay, so when you decided this is a good partnership, then what? Did you go to the school board and say, we're going to do this? Did it have to get approved, or was this something that the superintendent just said, yeah, this is great? So the superintendent wrote the application. <laughs> oh, um, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's Perfect. that. And then uh, once uh, the partnership was moving forward, we worked with all of the administrators in the district to help them understand what the initiative was about and try to recruit the types of teachers who you know, raise their hand and say, I'll take responsibility uh, for that. I'm really excited to make changes and make um, our schools and community a better place. And right. then we opened it up for an application across the district and had a, uh, we've got 21 so teachers in the project. partnership geared to high schooler students or everybody, every student across the board? Uh, so we have teachers K-12, uh, okay, we've got good. 21 teachers, but we really focused on recruiting teachers in grades 6 through 8. So half of the teachers are in grades 6 through 8. Okay. And we were really deliberate about that because of the middle school transition. There's so right. many new things right. to design and so many things to figure out. So the more people who can help with that, uh, the better. Okay. And so I think we have actually like 14 different schools represented or something We do, like yeah. That. It's pretty Excellent. large. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, so Michelle and Juana, when you first heard about this, what did you think? I was excited. I'd heard about IDEO and their uh, innovation and design 
thinking uh, for a long time and just to learn more about it and how to learn how to apply it into the classroom or any other projects. My project's not necessarily just my classroom focus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so I jumped up at the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, did you feel the same? No, I was. <laughs> <laughs> by which I mean, I was in almost the opposite situation of many, I don't know about all, but many teachers in that I was faced with an immediate challenge. I had just been not voluntold the opposite. I actually volunteered for it. We had no maker space, no engineering class, no nothing at our school. So I was given the job of both teaching an engineering class and starting a maker club wow. in this year. And the minute I saw this, I said, this will give me time to think about it because mm -hmm. teachers are day-to-day -day creatures. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're focused on day-to-day. -day, and I was really worried that I was going to get caught up in the day-to-day right. -day stuff. So that, I was almost mm -hmm. the opposite. I was like, Which oh, is easy to do, too. Yes, particularly yeah. for teachers. So yeah. yeah, so for me, it was really almost the opposite. It's like, oh, look, this is going to give me time mm -hmm. to do something I need to do now. right yeah. now. Yeah. Now, the article I read about this, they talked about design thinking. Mm -hmm. First of all, for all our viewers, could you explain what that means first? Yeah, so design thinking is a series of methods and mindsets uh, to creatively problem solve uh, identified needs. And that starts with empathy. Um, IDEO practices human-centered design, which means um, learning what the needs of your users are. For teachers, that means mm -hmm. learning what their students' needs are. Okay. So with the design thinking process, how did you incorporate this with your own students? How did that go? Well, my first step was to survey my students. Well, thinking about the, one of the big needs that our students have and um, the purpose of the empathy activity was really to take my bias away from it and tr see really what the students are thinking about it because we may have our own preconceived notions but they right. perceive this very differently. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, it went well. It went well. I definitely want to expand it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the <laughs> thing I'm working on right now. Okay. And you I had immediate results from the empathy which was uh, the empathy activity which was um, to do a, a number of things and I decided to survey my students and I surveyed them on my engineering course which was coming up. We have a, we teach a year and a semester so that mm -hmm. I, this was in November, December and I surveyed like literally every student I had which is like a hundred something students and said, asked them three questions. What do you know about digital manufacturing or tech? Are you taking my engineering class and if, um, if you're not, could you tell me why? And of I got 85 responses, which is huge. Which is great. Yeah. And only nine no, no, no's. In other words, you know, the ones that blew it off. And from it, I found that the two big reasons students weren't taking it was they thought it would have too much math and that uh, they weren't going yeah. to be engineers. So I immediately crafted a letter to our college and career counselor saying, hey, could you send out a note telling people from me that this engineering class will not require math and there's lots of reasons you might want to take it even if you aren't an engineer. It literally doubled the enrollment, and nice. and the the students who joined were all under almost all underrepresented uh, students, which is exactly what I was looking for. So it was amazingly successful. Awesome. Yeah, because I think a lot of people they hear the word engineering, and they, you think you know a lot of math, but a lot of artists mm -hmm. use yes. engineering methods to get something done, and they Music. don't realize it. Music, yeah, music, art, too. business, yeah. um, medical, medicine. Yes. You know, I mean, th printing 3D body parts is going to be a thing. <laughs> okay. Yes. So yeah. Okay. So what are some of the projects um, your teachers are working on with um, the help of the guild? Yeah, I can speak a little like generally, and then I'll kick it to you, Nate. But mm -hmm. I think one thing that I found particularly cool and um, I'm inspired by is that you know, oftentimes we get boxed into being kind of STEM focused and just like mm -hmm. what can kids make and STEM, STEM, STEM. Um, but I've found such a wide variety of projects um, from tech integration in the classroom to uh, school culture and climate that includes everybody to equity focused um, classrooms mm -hmm. that I, I was just been really inspired. And I'll let Nate speak a little more. Yeah, uh, you know, we have projects going on about how might we do a better job of welcoming sixth graders into middle school, how might we um, right. rethink how lunch works at the junior highs, uh, especially because it's such a busy time and often impersonal because kids are eating all over the place, so how could we right. uh, think mm -hmm. of that? There's a project um, trying to expand access to um, the Invention Convention, which a lot of the elementary schools are participating in now. 
there are quite a few projects about expanding access to things like STEM or to um, you know high quality education opportunities uh, to make sure all kids are represented. Um, trying to think of some others, uh, but those are some of the buckets. But uh, quite a few around thinking about this opportunity on the shift to middle schools about how might we make them be the schools that we dream of. Right, right. Now when the teachers are going through this, um, there is some tr training, right? Correct. Okay, and then do you go to the, each classroom that you've trained that teacher just to make sure they're on track, or do they have a phone call with you, hey, I'm lost here, what do I do? Yeah, so our learning journey is a series of in-person events okay. and then uh, some, phone, some coaching calls. Um, and Nate is really here on the ground in Fremont and interacting with people um, as much as possible, and I think everybody's pretty appreciative of that. Yeah. I just want to share. You forgot the homework? <laughs> uh oh. There was minor homework. Uh oh. Yeah, homework. Okay, no, Michelle, I mean, we did, spill yeah. the beans. No, yeah, we had. In fact, my, my project four is late right now. I'm sorry. It, it will be in. Oh, um, my. I'm way behind you. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had four assignments, the first of which was that survey mm -hmm. and then writing it up. Then we just had to, uh, the second one, forgetting what the second one was. Um, Ideation. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was yeah. it was the one where that because that was the one where I wrote about the student the, who I mm -hmm. m I misread what was happening. Mm -hmm. The third one we had to show a picture of what we'd learned from our, you know, how we were advancing to our next stage. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth one is basically yeah. a, a a final one, right? It's it's yeah. the overview of the whole thing. That's your two more, but yeah, you got it. Yeah, two more. Test, am I missing five? I'm your, sorry. Okay. Your test iterate plan, right? Of That's it. Te that test iterate. Those. That was mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So it's been a great combination. So we have so we've had uh, so far two full days um, with the Teachers Guild team um, and some leadership coaches. So mm -hmm. it's you know on the one hand. Um, our participants are designing solutions to challenges they face. On the other hand, uh, they're learning leadership skills so that they can put those things into place. We've also had some really nice partnerships with both the city and the library where staff from the city and library have come mm -hmm. and participated with us with kind of a realization that our community serves all of the kids. Right. Um, uh, and then so between those in-person meetings, we've had webinars, we've had assignments that are due, I try to get around to the schools and mm -hmm. check in with people um, as much as I can. Um, so it's, it's a nice mix of in-person, online, and then applying what you've learned into these uh, products. Mm -hmm. So what shifts have you seen with your own kids? Well, for Are me, they taking it and running well, with no, it? Well, I was going to say, it's, for me, um, the shift I needed was in my thinking. And can I show you my little yes. thing? Yes. <laughs> I'm very proud of this. Oh, okay. you should be. Um, so in the second day uh, thing, and, and I should say, I was, I'm a second career teacher. Before that, I did design in tech. Okay. I, was a, I was a programmer. But it was all, I'm a very independent person. I don't like dependencies. They make me kind of eh. So this was one of our projects, and what we were having to do was put little stars around the different things that we needed, right? Uh -huh. And what our, our task in that day was to uh, somehow develop, develop a prototype. And I was literally like writing down a list of all the things I needed and going, my prototype has to be a list that's so, you know, terrible. And I suddenly realized that what I was thinking of was, you know, I needed money. I have none. I'm doing this whole thing right now. I, I've gotten $1,400 in one from the ROP sent and one from a, a grant. That's it. And it's been, that's on my mind. And I suddenly realized that what I needed to do was communicate that what I wanted, this is my wow. ideal room. You know, so instead of just wow. saying, here's a list of all the things I want, yeah. I put together just a room saying, okay, you know, like I've got a little enclosed space there for my 3D printers, and I want a particular type of desk. I even then started saying, <laughs> you know, here's my little desk, you know. And these are all the feedbacks I got because they were really good at grouping, um, grouping us together. So the people who were, I was presenting this to were all people who were also building this, it, were further ahead, had bigger STEM uh, projects than I do. So this is all their feedback. So now I realize that what I need is to communicate my vision. I don't need a laundry list. I need, you know, something like this to get people excited. Mm. And that was a huge aha moment for me. Nice. So that was that was my kind of yeah. thing. For for me, me, okay, oh yeah. sorry. For me it's similar. Like I think where I'm actually a little stuck right now is trying to figure out how to recruit uh, commitment for my project. My uh, big aha moment for my empathy activity was um, f focusing on how students uh, feel about honors classes. I surveyed uh. honors, non-honors students, just what their messaging was and what their thoughts and feelings about it. 
and just trying to make sure, first of all, how to spread this across not just my small sample size of students to see if uh, similar thoughts are prevalent throughout the district, yeah. and then how to spread this message to the larger community uh -huh. because the students feel in many cases sometimes frustrated about uh, the pressure that they're put upon them and yeah. um, my goal is to try to find ways to kind of get them to realize that at, especially at the middle school that this shouldn't be a something that's so hard for them right so. they should also enjoy life yeah yeah Nate did you want to yeah add I was gonna say we have a great mix of um, teachers who are applying it to kind of their leadership, thinking of their classroom, thinking of how to improve things at their school. And we do have a handful of teachers who are actually working with the design principles with their students. So one of the teachers, Carrie Kerr um, at Cabrillo. Any relation? No. <laughs> <laughs> What's weird is my son's name is Carrie, so. Uh, oh, no oh yeah. <laughs> so she's working with her, I think, fourth grade class, and they're looking at the flex spaces. So the flex spaces are these rooms in mm -hmm. Fremont that are designed to be adaptable, right. but for many purposes. Um, but nobody's really asked the students what they want to use the rooms for. Huh. So she's engaged her students in asking them what they want for this room and they're going out and interviewing other kids and they're applying the design principles towards imagining and trying to design a flex space that will work for them. Right. So I'm it's really such great ideas just here. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, how long have this, has this partnership been going on so far? So it's just this year actually yeah. um, mm -hmm. and we consider ourselves two year partners with school districts and okay. really excited about what next year can imagine and be like. Um, and I just wanted to say that like, our North Star at the Teachers Guild is teacher efficacy and believing um, their ability to create change and, and communicate that change and collaborate in new ways. Um, and I think it's interesting that you asked about students and actually we're one step away from that because we believe that teachers actually know what they need for their students more yes. than anybody else. So Absolutely. I was excited to hear what mm -hmm. they had, but I mean, <laughs> honestly, um, that ability to, and, and this is cited in research, we. Uh, cite a gentleman named John Hattie all the time that, and his his research shows that collective teacher efficacy is the number one factor associated with student achievement. So, okay, so this is a two-year partnership. We got one more school year with this yeah. program, or with them on hands. Yeah. So two years from now, can we have you come back? And I want to hear all the success stories. Sure, and even better than that, you can come on May fifteenth to Cabrillo after school. We're having a an impact showcase where all of the participants will be showing the results of their oh, projects nice. this year. That's yeah. exciting. <laughs> well, congratulations to all of you. This is great, and thanks for the partnership. Thank you so much, yeah. Kika. Thanks for being thanks, on the Kika. show. Right. Thank you. From everyone Thank you. here at Community Conversations, we appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.